This is episode three of the Women on Women in Art podcast series launched by the Institute of Art in the Arab World in collaboration with Lauha and the Moving Biography Summer School. My name is Yasmin Ta'an and I have with me today Afaf Zre, who will tell us about her encounter with Helen Lkhal. Afaf Zre is a Lebanese painter, poet and writer. She received her BA in Fine Arts from the American University of Beirut in 1970 and her MA in Islamic Art from Harvard University in 1972. She taught art and art history at LAU, that was BUC then, from 1972 till 1983, and from 2007 to uh, 2013. She published more than six books on poetry and art. Her paintings are part of the permanent collection of the British Museum in London, Bergil Art Foundation in Sharjah, the Sursuk Museum in Beirut, and in Darat al Funun uh, in Amman. She is represented by Saleh Barakat Gallery. As for Helen, she was born in Pennsylvania to a Lebanese-American family. She studied art at the Acad Académie Libanaise des Beaux-Arts, Alba, from 1946 to 1948. She established Gallery One, one of the most prominent art galleries in Beirut in the 1960s, and taught art at AUB for a decade. She also taught at LAU from 1980 till 1997. And in 1988, her book on the women, or the book is entitled The Women Artist in Lebanon, was published by the Arab Institute for Women at LAU. Helen inspired many artists, among them Afaf Zre. Hello, Afaf. Hello. How Good are morning. you today? Fine, thanks. I'm so happy to be here. It's such an honor to be talking about Helen. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to start with my first question. In your poem on the blue painting, Thoughts, you wrote, and I'm quoting you here, Today I want to break the mold, the pattern, to access, to see everything as coming from the good. I want to dwell in the knowledge that life is open and open-ended, and that this is the source of all the good, and all that is creative. Can you tell us more about your encounter with Helen and the way your transparent paintings convey emotions and make visible the color of light? Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, mentioning that uh, my relationship with Helen was an encounter because it really was an encounter. She taught me when I was just still a child and um, a very young child. And I first saw her paintings in my neighbor's house and uh, it was an encounter to, to see her paintings and to visibly see the presence of uh, her transparent color. And that moved me beyond description. And when I was about 15 years old, my parents asked Helen to teach me private lessons before I went into AUB to become a student. And Helen was a very, very rich teacher in the sense of leaving me the freedom to pick and choose how I want to become as an artist and to look at her as a model, as a mentor, as someone to look at and to see how I want to become an artist. And one of the things that inspired me most was uh, her transparency that she mastered in terms of the colors inspired me and uh, made me aware of uh, or gave me the license to become very transparent about my own emotional life. And so the, in my emotional life, which was preoccupying me a lot and it preoccupied me all my life, became the sort of a guiding light that, uh, that, could, that, that, that it is a valid to, to live in that openness, in that transparency, in that vulnerability, in that immensity of the indescribable uh, fe feelings and emotions. And the butterflies that I felt in my stomach when I looked at her paintings um, inspired in me the sense of of uh, wonder and and the the fact that I was able to 
translate those this wonder into my inner life and into the later into the uh, understanding of light as both inner and outer be began at that moment when I was about 11 or 12 when I saw her painting. I can say that there is a certain lightness in both your paintings, a, 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 a transparent lightness as in weight. Weight, yeah. Not uh, as in light, but a, a lightness as in weight. I feel that there is, it's for me, it's like a, a feather, a kind of, you know. Because it is basically a distillation. That's basically what it is. It is a distillation. And as a distillation, it has to be uh, ephemeral. It has to be of the spirit. Um, some of my paintings, like the Morning Do Softly series, which were very, very, very sensual, uh, were also very light because they were in their sensuality there was a transparency and, and an otherworldliness that is so essential for living. And I don't want to draw a line between me and Helen, which is not really f true or not really accurate, because life is very complex. But uh, the awe that I saw uh, in Helen's paintings all, was always with me when I was actually translating the sensuality into uh, the otherworldliness. Interesting. Is, uh, you mentioned the line, and yes, it, metaphorically, but now I'm thinking about the presence of the actual line in the painting. There are no lines in your painting, and there are no lines in most, if I may say, all uh, Helen Khal's paintings. Uh, well, there are edges. Yes. There are no lines. There are edges. And Divisions then, of colors. The, the, how, how colors interact with each other, and what is what has inspired me very much also was the always was the line in between things mm -hmm. the, the because we are all entities that touch each other mm -hmm. whether we touch each other emotionally physically spiritually mentally intele intellectually however you want to we touch each other we touch nature we ta we we touch and 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 there is a line that in which we we connect, and it is that line that is in between mm -hmm. that is the most fascinating uh, line in the whole world for me. Mm -hmm. And it started by my putting my two fingers right next to each other and looking at the line that they make in between and studying just the, the intricacies of the light and dark and, the, and the, the, the actually not so accurate shading and the not so accurate alignment of the of the two entities and when you read a lot and and think about a lot you you see you feel in in this a very complex and a very deep uh, spiritual also uh, component to everything that is physical mm. yeah does that answer your question yeah uh, uh, what is nice that you're taking us into the world of your painting which is really you know, like entering yes. your painting is is interesting, you know, just... To yeah, know. what I'm trying to say that uh, having been a young 19-year-old, very impressionable student at the time and having known Helen for a very, very long time, those feelings that the budding of the flower, mm -hmm. you know, the budding of the flower began at that time, and that's what I want to talk about. That's why I'm bringing my painting, but not to talk about my painting, but to bring uh, really what Helen is, my encounter with Helen helped bring out. And also the most important thing actually in, in my encounter with Helen was, was her courage. Mm. And her courage as an artist and her courage as a woman. Do you remember uh, visiting the gallery? Gallery One? Uh, I, I was too young at that time. So yeah. most of the encounters were at your neighbor? No, uh, she came, she taught, and then she, she taught me at... Uh, yes. And, you know, Beirut at the time was a very... Uh, vibrant city. Vibrant city, and everybody sort of, you know, um, con connected with each other, with one another. And uh, Helen was a very prominent member of the 
of the society and it was it was uh, I mean I, I knew her quite well and she was a um, you know family member family friend and uh, and yeah. all that uh, so, and you know Ras Beirut was a tiny little place yeah. in terms of knowing each other and so that's where I knew her and then I I knew her later in life and, and then when she went to Washington and I went to Washington we met again in Washington and so I, I've known her for, for a very long time. And her writing, you're, of course, I'm sure you're familiar with her writing, her, uh, her, art, criticism. her art criticism. Yes, I'm familiar with that very well. Yeah. I was very interested in reading all her thoughts and her, all her ideas about other artists, about other exhibitions that I saw and just seeing well, her perspective and how she put them all together. But basically, the thing that I want to come back to the thing that really, really, really moved me throughout my life is Helen's, uh, is a con- how contagious her courage was mm-hmm. and how, how brave she was and how committed she was to being an artist uh, despite all the odds and all the challenges and all the problems that faced her mm-hmm. and how much, as a woman, uh, she changed the rules of the game, both as an artist and as a woman. So for me, as, as, as somebody who was very young at that time, all of these were very, very important, even, even as important, if not more important, than the, the direct influence of her art. It's interesting that you're saying, as a woman, and, and now I'm thinking, how does it make a difference <clears throat> to be a, a man artist or a female artist, a male artist or a female artist? I know this is not an easy question to answer, <laughs> but just but I think you answered it. You spoke about the the challenges. Are they cultural or you know like just challenge the challenge of being a woman and how uh, she in a way dealt with uh, with these challenges in a very courageous way. Yes, and I, I wouldn't want to talk about her specifically in this because I, I shouldn't talk about, about things that I don't really know very, very well. I'll talk about just about me in the sense, you know, I come from a very, very academic family, a family where a, a lot of people were, um, a lot of women and a lot of uh, members of the family broke boundaries and broke, you know, and, and became professional women and professional uh, people and but with Helen for me what was so inspiring is that she she broke uh, professional rules as an artist you know and that for me that you can actually because with an artist there's always how are you going to make a living out of this you know it's so, such a risky profession how are you going to make a living you, you have to get married you have to you have to live the traditional conventional life, you know, and paint as a hobby. But the, when, you, when you decide to paint as a, as a profession and make a living out of art, not so necessarily only make a living, but believe in your art so that whether you make a living or not is not really the thing that makes you become an artist or not. So yeah. the, the, all, these, all these questions and to actually live you know, on your own as a woman with, with like Helen with two children and so on, is just uh, uh, taking taking charge of her life, making my, making choices. Yes. And for me, this was very very inspiring because when I had to make that choice, it was already done for me. It was already made. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about her as a gallerist and as an artist. I mean, how did she combine being a gallerist and an artist? We know that being a gallerist and being an artist they are two totally different, different things, things that have... Well, uh, Helen had, had many sides to her personality, yes. and, and she's a very intelligent woman, a very intelligent yeah. woman, and she had many sides to her personality, and she was thoughtful, she was a true artist, but at the same time, she was someone who was really conscious of art in all its aspects but she it, I, what I understood is that the gallery did not last for very long mm-hmm. and so it, it wasn't as if she continued all her life mm-hmm. she just started that gallery at that time and she turned into uh, writing art for the for the newspapers and for Monday morning yeah. 
I remember she was the art critic of Monday morning at the time. And so she, she wrote for the Daily Star and all that. And that was where, where her forte really is, rather than as a gallerist, I think. Yes. Um, is there any final word or description that you want to add uh, before we end this session? The only thing I want to say is, is that, uh, that Helen was very present. And it is her presence that is most inspiring and it is a legacy. It is her presence as a person, as a, as a woman, as a person, as an artist, as a writer, and as somebody who, uh, who lived her life honestly and sincerely. That was the most lasting impression on me as somebody who was observing her and who had an encounter with her as a student. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Afaf, and thank you for listening to these podcasts. Thank you.